Okay, we've got John from Adobe. He's going to show us some of the rendering and other things. I'll get John to introduce himself and launch into the presentation. John. Hi, uh, my name's John Barry. I'm the Pro Video Specialist for Adobe Australia New Zealand. And I'm going to go through some slides here and then we'll do a bit of a demo on sure. another system over there. Okay. So, Hewlett Packard and Adobe have actually been partners together for a very long time. It's been around 10 year mark mm -hmm. uh, that we've actually partnered with, with the guys there. So, we've got a really good relationship. HP, huge partnership. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Actually, uh, uh, just a, a little play on words there, because we have our creative cloud now. Oh yeah, horsepower. Yeah, I've gone I creative I horsepower. That well, that's as very part clever. Of the yeah, so we, great like, lines think alike with this with the silly. I puns. like where you're going with this. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so um, our quality engineering team and the software developers, they all use HP gear inside San Jose, where yeah. all the magic happens, mm -hmm. as well as obviously some of the other partners that we've got, but. Sure. Hewlett Packard, great partner. I know I get very excited when I start playing with the new gear. So I've done some tests as well. Yep. Oh, let's have a look here. So we've been talking a lot about Ultra HD and beyond mm -hmm. as far as things like 6K, 8K. and 8K and kind of having this platform in our software that allows us to be very open. Yep. And so I just wanted to kind of highlight what, what that's all about. So. For those of you at home who don't quite know what Ultra HD is, it's still fairly new. I thought I'd just break it down pretty pretty basic. Pretty much everyone is going to know what the full HD is. It's been around for a long time. Yeah. Uh, the resolution is a, a 1080 high by 1920 wide mm -hmm. image um, as far as the pixel count goes. So just to put it in perspective, if we make four layers of 1080p, which is full HD, mm -hmm. that's actually equates to the resolution of Ultra HD. So yep. you've got 3840 by 2160. Mm -hmm. And then we start looking at some of the other resolutions there. 4K, which is cinema, mm -hmm. is a little bit more, not by much. So at home, you can get a cinema quality image on your TV if you've got an Ultra HD TV and they've which, been around for a little while. Which, yeah, which are now starting to become mainstream. And they're pretty affordable, mm. actually, considering what they used the to cost be, of yeah. a full HD was way back. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, very nice price point. So, kind of want to highlight that, yes, we've got these TVs now that can do this, but the phones are starting to do it now. So, the Samsung range from the S5 on mm -hmm. are able to shoot full um, video with an Ultra full HD. Pay? Ultra yeah. HD 4K yeah. video. Um, I've got one of those phones and it's pretty impressive the kind of quality you get out of it. And I do have an example of what that looks like on that computer there. Sure, we'll look in a sec, yeah. So the Gone Girl thing is kind of, it's our latest pet mm -hmm. thing of what we've done and we're very proud of that. We've been working with David Fincher's team for quite a while, but this is the first feature film um, from Hollywood that's used Premiere Pro as the NLE or the non-linear editor. And they've done a lot of world firsts. One being, it was the first film to be shot in 6K with the red cinema camera. Mm -hmm. They actually had a beta version of the camera when they started principal photography. Right. They were that early. Yeah. Um, and the hardware, which they used the Hewlett Packard machines as part of their custom builds to get the grunt they needed, um, they were the first to have real-time 6K review um, with their systems. And obviously I mentioned that Premiere Pro was used for NLE. Yeah. Just a little bit on this guy, in case you're not familiar with him. Uh, David Finch has been around for quite a while. He's won some BAFTAs. Hasn't quite got the gong for the Hollywood Awards, but um, I'm certainly sure nominated. So here's some of his films, just to put him in context. Yeah. Um, Seven, great film. Fight Club, another classic. He kind of goes down these very dark kind of film genres. Yeah. So. Gone Girl, again, fantastic film, looks amazing, and it's got that dark edge. So the Gone so Girl well. with the dragon tattoo. Yeah. So a little bit on, a little bit on the, the guy who's actually cut the film. Yeah. Um, he's actually an Aussie, Kirk Ooh. Baxter. He's from Sydney. Captain Kirk, eh? Yeah. And um, so he's, well, now he's going to be forever remembered to be part of that transition into Hollywood as far as Premiere goes. So he's won a couple of awards as well. He's actually won a couple of gongs. I might go back. Yeah, just 
back a step there. there. He is. So he's won co-editor twice mm -hmm. for, um, let's see here, Social, Social Network, Network and Girl with a Dragon Tattoo. So this guy knows what he's doing. And if you have seen the film, it's really edited quite well. The mm -hmm. edit really drives the, the drama as well. Um, now to put 6K into perspective, this is where the 4K was. Mm -hmm. And then you've got all this extra resolution around it. So what they did was shoot it in 6K and they finished in 5K. They wanted the extra resolution so they could correct for camera movements mm -hmm. and reposition. And yeah. They wanted to perfect the final output. So they wanted that extra res. This is what the camera looks like. It's actually kind of big. But it almost looks like a transformer or something. It does. It's very <laughs> robust as well. Yeah. But this is kind of where digital cinema is going. Yeah. The age of film is has gone away. Okay. Except for the purists who still want it. Yeah. So now I'm just going to go through a little bit of the tech. Mm -hmm. So they had several systems that were made up. All of them were custom. Just to highlight where some of the customization is, they've got some 8-core and 12-core machines. Then the RAM. So they started with 128 gig of RAM and they had another one that was a couple sitting there on 256. So more RAM is, is good. We at Adobe use a lot of the RAM that's accessible as well. And then they've gone in through the NVIDIA cards as well to take advantage of the, the CUDA technology. And then under this line, that's all more customised stuff that because of the casings that they're using, they're able to continue building and customise it to, to get, get the power they want. So that's just to highlight the customisation. It's kind of it gives them a lot of flexibility as far as being able to grow with what their needs are. Um, so we've got other guys that are ready to be working with Premiere as well. Coen Brothers' next film is going to be coming out, um, edited in Premiere. And this is a, just a quick benchmark. I just did a very basic kind of um, graphic here. So I might just bring this up for you. You see what it looks like. Where I was using the Ray Trace engine mm -hmm. inside of After Effects. And that's where the GPU really does get leveraged. And it is actually only available through CUDA. So you need an NVIDIA card. You need to be able to have that type of card in your system. And this is what I, I went and built. So I went and made a 3D extrusion of the, the Hewlett Packard logo and I've just made it look a bit like glass mm -hmm. and kind of using all this fractal stuff and make it look really cool. Now, this was done on this machine. These are the specs. It's an i7 uh, Intel Core. It's running eight cores with the hyper-threading at about 3.1 gig. Mm -hmm. And it's got 16 gig of DDR3 RAM. The NVIDIA card is the 5100M, eight gig of VRAM, just on a, on a Mind laptop. Mind-boggling, yeah. Just... <laughs> so here's some, of the, here's some of the specs here. So this is using After Effects and the power of that system using the CUDA card. Mm -hmm. And I got 11 minutes to render out 119 frames of that that image there which is spinning it does a perfect 360 rotation and then this is what it was with just the CPU same system I just went in the preferences and turned off the, the GPU acceleration 173 minutes massive difference that's seven minutes short of three hours mm. so when you put them side by side that actually equates to a 15x speed difference it's actually 15 point something mm but I thought I'd ran it down. Yeah, <laughs> be conservative. That's exactly, right. take the conservative number. So yeah, I mean, Hewlett Packard and Adobe, just really good combination of hardware and software. So let's take a quick look at Premiere in action. Mm -hmm. So this is our new latest version of Premiere Pro. And oh, actually I might go into the Samsung. So this is actually shot on the Samsung Note 3. Mm -hmm. Note Four is out, or just about to come just out? Just about to come out, yeah. Just very short. Been, been announced anyway. So I've just done a match frame of this image here. So if I just go full screen. How good is this screen? Mm. This is another thing with, with the Hewlett Packard gear, is that this laptop is using the Dream Color display. Mm -hmm. And I do demos all around the country, and sometimes overseas as well. And I take these machines with me, and everyone comments on how good the picture quality is. That's because it's a 10-bit display. You could grade a feature film on that display. It certainly does look extremely sharp. I mean we've all seen the the uh, 
the pixels on older technologies and wondered, you know, when it was going to get better. I mean, I still remember seeing text on a green screen back in 1979 and my God, have we come a long way. Yes. Some of the good things as well is you can also see it from a lot of very wide viewing angles. So I can, I'm very, about 90 degrees sort of off it. So it's looking perfect from my angle as well. Yeah. So we need now is holographic displays, but that's in a few years, <laughs> in a few years. So this is the exact same frame that we were just looking at now, but yep. now looking at 100% as opposed to just fit to the screen. Mm -hmm. um, now if I just start dragging around, you can see the detail that is on the sign, the truck, and this is coming off a phone with a tiny little pinhole. Yeah, yeah, it's not, a red, it's not a red camera. Right. Yeah. But it's very impressive. And yeah. So now that that's becoming a bit more of the norm, mm -hmm. um, we need to be able to edit that. And H.264 yeah. is the codec, and that's a very CPU-heavy codec. So the power of being able to use these powerful machines certainly comes into play. Uh, now I also have some other Ultra HD stuff and this is actually using uh, DSLR, so um, this is actually from the Panasonic camera, mm -hmm. GH4. Yep, which I've used, very nice camera. And they were very kind enough to, to lend one to me for a week or so. So I just ran around and just shot some random stuff. Now that's the full frame that I've got there, mm -hmm. but this is in a full HD timeline. So I've got all this extra resolution to punch in. So we've got that versus that, as yeah. far as I'm not degrading Losing the quality of, yeah. of zooming in. I'm just looking at the pixel for pixel within that type of uh, resolution timeline. Yeah. So, I mean, there's another example of it there. And so I kind of, with one shot, I've got two shots. Yeah, I've got a, a wide and a close up. Was well, what they were doing when you were saying with the with the red camera, they were taking six K, moving it to five K, then they could move it around, zoom in, zoom out, and not lose any quality. Yeah, and that's something we've never been able to really do before. But now it's something anybody can do. Mm. So here's here's a really good example of stabilization at work. So this is using Premiere Pro stabilizer, warp stabilizer. This is the original handheld camera shot, mm -hmm. and then the next shot will be a complete lock off. So it's actually locked off there. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't. It looks like it's on sticks yeah. or, or a tripod. I, I probably, I'll probably need that software for this video afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, be, I'll be relying on Google's YouTube stabilization. Yeah, right. Which is probably not quite as good, but you know. So the last thing I want to show here is Dragon 6K footage. Sure, let's have a look. In the timeline. Yep. So I'll just select the clip and go into the properties. Where do we put it down the bottom there? And you can see, I might just do a little zoom thing there for you. Sure. The resolution on that, 6144 by 2592. Crazy resolution. And the sequence is actually a match. So let's move that out of the way. Oops, I'm in the wrong mode. That's all right. That's all right, zoom out. So the sequence itself is also 6K. Again, the same resolution yep. in the sequence okay. settings itself. No, no smoke or mirrors here. No. And I'm using, I'm only using the, the battery powered. You plug this in, you get more grunt out mm. of this laptop. Um, so I'm at quarter resolution and I'll just hit play. And you can see this green dot here. That indicates whether or not we're dropping any frames. Green, it's good. When we start to drop frames, I've got some color correction going on there. I've dropped one frame in that time. Mm -hmm. If for whatever reason I need more power, and really if I plug this in, I won't drop any frames at all. Yep. But using the combination of the technology we've got here, we can drop the playback resolution, which we've got as a nice little drop down there. And at one eighth on this machine, I'm really not gonna notice any difference in quality. No. If I go full screen, it still looks fantastic. And that's just straight off the camera, off the 6K camera. She looked a bit unhappy that you dropped a frame. Yeah, well, <laughs> it's still green, so I haven't dropped any frames just being silly. on one eight. All good. Yeah, you plug it in and you get more power out of out of the machine. So yeah, that's that's kind of my my spiel. Okay, thank you very much.